Hello, everybody. I'm Harry Thibodeau, and I welcome our global audience to Kourou French Guiana for tonight's launch. My comments are also being translated into French this evening. The fifth Ariane 5 of 2015 is on the pad. It's uh, early evening, late afternoon here on the edge of the Amazon rainforest, 500 kilometers, 300 miles north of the equator. It's uh, been fabulous weather here all week long. It is very hot. Uh, there is uh, the shot from Jupiter, and back out to the pad, there is the star of tonight's broadcast, the Ariane 5 ECA. She stands over 50 meters tall and tips the scales at 774 tons tonight. We're using a 17-meter fairing. Its job is to protect the satellites during the early stages of the flight and while they've been here on the ground. SkyMaster rides in the top position. It's a huge satellite, one of the largest commercial telecom satellites ever made, a mass of 6,440 kilograms, that's a little over 14,000 pounds. And our sat 2 is in the lower position tonight. Under the Silda weighs 3,000 kilos. More on them later. The launch window tonight, as Stefan Israel said, opens at 5.30 p.m. Karu time, closes an hour and 45 minutes later. And tonight is the culmination of a month of nonstop work here at CSG. Let's take a look at the launch campaign that got us to this point. After sailing 8,000 kilometers from Europe, the Ariane 5 launcher arrived in French Guiana. At CSG, the initial assembly began on August 12th, continued through September 8th. That included mating with the two solid rocket boosters and then the cryogenic upper stage and the equipment box. We then transferred the launcher to the BAF, the building of final assembly where it found its two passengers. Sky Muster arrived at CSG August 27th, joining AirSat 2 that had already been waiting in a clean room. The two satellite teams checked every detail of the payloads that had taken several years to build. Only when all tests were done did we fuel the satellites. At the BAF, the satellites were attached to the launcher. RSAT 2 rides in the lower position covered by the Silva. Sky Muster is mounted on top of the Silva. Then the fairing encases the entire satellite composite. On September 28th, the launch readiness review gave the green light to head to the pad. Yesterday, the launcher, satellites, and the mobile launch table, a total of 1,760 metric tons, were towed to the launch pad, all by one very special truck. BA-226 is on the pad and ready to fly. And we're under five minutes now to launch, and we see another fantastic shot of the Ariane 5. All of the status panel there is green in, uh, in Karu. Green means go. Total payload tonight over 10 metric tons, uh, 10,203 kilos for those who want to be exact. 9,400 of that made up by our two satellites, SkyMuster and RSAT-2. The rest of uh, the mass uh, this evening uh, will be comprised of support structures you'll hear us talking about, including the SILDA, which covers RSAT-2, and it uh, serves as the base for SkyMuster uh, to be attached to. DDO, pardon, attention, pour moins une minute. Can you hear that in a couple of seconds? Stop, moins une minute. Okay, we welcome everybody around the world viewing us on arianspace.com. Special greetings to the people watching live in Argentina through the public television from uh, Technopolis at RSAT headquarters, also at INVAP headquarters, Airbus Defense and Space in Europe, NBN has viewing parties all across the country, SSL has a viewing party in Palo Alto, California. And of course, a personal greeting to my co-workers at Viasat all around the world. We built the complex ground segment equipment for SkyMuster. Oh, and six-year-old Bailey Brooks, here it comes. We're gonna launch your satellite, SkyMuster. 
à tous les DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage de ZEAP, décollage. It's become my trademark to call it the rumble in the Amazon jungle, and it really is as the mighty Ariane 5 ECA roars out toward Devil's Island. One of those bucket list events to have watching an Ariane 5 thunder into the sky from CSG. A minute into the launch, and the Ariane 5 has already broken the sound barrier here at Corbu. And this massive Jupiter facility literally shaking. We can feel it now. 1,300 tons of thrust breaking the Ariane 5 free from the bonds of Earth's gravity. 90% of that power coming from the two boosters, each one 31 meters tall, burning 240 tons of solid propellant in two minutes. That's better than two tons a second. When the boosters have done their job in a little less than a minute from right now, Ariane will be 70 kilometers into the sky. It'll be racing away from us at more than 1.6 kilometers a second faster than a bullet. The information coming down to us at Gilat, the tracking station on a mountain just behind us here at the Jupiter facility. The next major event is the burnout and the jettison of those two solid rocket boosters. You're going to be able to see it live on the screen. It'll happen in about uh, 13 seconds from right now when those boosters have uh, completed uh, their job at uh, 2 minutes 20 seconds into the mission. So watch for that. And look at those pictures. In the clear skies above Kourou, the boosters have uh, done their job. We don't need them anymore. Talk about losing weight. On the pad, Ariane 5 was 774 tons, roughly. We're now down to 180 tons. And in the rocket business, when you get lighter, you go a lot faster. And there you see some video from a previous mission of uh, the rockets, uh, the boosters dropping away. Ariane 5 now closing in on 100 kilometers in the sky, traveling at 150, uh, make that uh, 2.8, uh, 2.1 kilometers uh, per second. Speed number tonight, by the way, 9.3 is the uh, magic number. Next up, the jettison of the fairing. It's protected the satellites from the elements on the ground. And in the early days of launch, early moments of launch, we don't need it anymore. And so very shortly, you are going to see and hear, there it is, on the animation. Separation de la coiffe. And the DDO has announced it. Here's uh, the fairing uh, dropping away from us uh, this evening. On the flight, we just lost another uh, two tons, by the way. There's some images from a previous mission. Technically, we were in space, but we still have a long way to go. But uh, things are going fine for Ariane 5. And we continue to uh, see the 3D animation. We're at 128 uh, kilometers into uh, uh, the sky and already 300 kilometers uh, downrange uh, from us here at uh, Karu and closing in on three uh, kilometers uh, per second. The main stage, or EPC, is now burning. It uh, burns for about Special nine greetings minutes. to the people watching live in Argentina and, uh, through the public the television from uh, Technopolis at RSAT the, headquarters, uh, also at INVAP headquarters. It uh, gulps uh, 320 kilograms, about 700 uh, pounds of fuel a second, 500 times more than a uh, jet engine. Uh, you just saw that... Uh, 
graph on the side of the screen. We're going to see that a whole lot more tonight. And that depicts uh, the uh, trajectory that we want to uh, be going in uh, this evening. And again, we are right down the middle. Uh, everything is going normal, as you heard the uh, DDO uh, just announce. 152 kilometers into uh, the sky uh, right now, Gilat is uh, the tracking station that is uh, tracking us uh, right now. And things continue to uh, go uh, normal uh, this evening on the uh, Ariane flight. We're going to be seeing some replays coming up in a moment. And again, uh, very, very impressive uh, replays uh, from the pad. Those will be coming in a second. You see the uh, 3D images of what's happening uh, right now uh, in the uh, sky. Here's the first of those replays we mentioned. Il reste three minutes de propulsion de l'EPC. La trajectoire est Just incredible to watch that Ariane 5 jump off the pad. You know, one of the uh, questions that I frequently get when people ask me, uh, why am I going to French Guiana? To launch a rocket. Well, the Kourou Space Base is located about uh, 500 kilometers north of the equator, and the Earth rotates much faster at the equator than it does, say, at the Kennedy Space Center in the Florida. Thus, the uh, Ariane 5 gets a huge boost from the Earth's rotation, and that allows satellite operators, as you see another great replay here, uh, that allows satellite operators, in many cases, to launch heavier payloads and to add more fuel to their bird, increasing their operational life. And thus, uh, the longer it lives up there, the more revenue you can generate. So the bottom line is it really does pay off in the long run to launch your satellite from the Amazon jungle. And uh, there you see the... Uh, Planification Minister from Argentina, who is uh, here with us uh, this evening. Also, uh, Jean-Michel uh, Casa, who is the French ambassador uh, to Argentina. Just some of the dignitaries who uh, are here this evening at uh, Corvu. The Ariane 5, uh, by the way, will uh, shortly uh, be picked up by our uh, tracking Project station nominal. in Natal, Brazil. You see that Everything remains nominal. There's that curve that I was talking about. Take a look at that real quick up on the right-hand side. And that uh, little dot is what you want to see following that curve perfectly, and it is. That means we're going uh, right down the middle. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to be using uh, five tracking stations. Karu has de la the uh, Gilat de Natal, uh, station. Brazil is Natal. Then out in the middle of the Atlantic is the Ascension Islands, and uh, we have a tracking station there. The west coast of Africa is uh, Lieberville, uh, Gibbon, and on the east coast, uh, Melindy, Kenya. Arian sending data to those stations, and uh, it tells Project us how the flight is progressing in real time. That's why the DDO can say things are nominal. Uh, later, engineers are going to pour over every bit of the data to determine exactly how things uh, worked. Next major event is the cutoff of the main stage, or the EPC. You're going to see that blue flame disappear, uh, and you'll see the separation of the main stage. There is the extinction of the flame, and shortly... The main stage has completed its job. It drops away. It's going to fall into the ocean de l'EPC. off Africa. And uh, shortly you'll hear the call that the upper stage has ignited. It'll burn for 16 minutes. Great video from a previous flight of the, USCA. the first uh, stage dropping away. You heard the announcement from the DDO that the upper stage has ignited. Before ignition, by the way, two small rockets on either side of the upper stage fired. That allowed the upper stage to move away from the lower stage, and we could safely ignite it. Uh, by the way, immediately after they did their job, we dumped them off because lighter rockets uh, fly uh, faster. 
And there you see again the depictions of our tracking stations. We're now going very, very fast. We're at over 7.07, almost 7.1 kilometers per second. Ariane 5 is well on its way to Africa. It's gaining speed by the second. And uh, we're seeing some of the key personnel and the VIPs in the auditorium right below my broadcast location here. And uh, most of them arrived uh, yesterday here in Nikovaru. They've been touring the space base uh, throughout uh, the last day or so. And they have the best seat in the house uh, for uh, the mission. History is being made uh, tonight by uh, Sky Muster. One of the most powerful telecom satellites ever, SkyMuster carries 202 KA band transponders that will deliver high-speed broadband service to an estimated 200,000 plus households in rural and remote Australia. SkyMuster represents the cutting edge of so-called high-throughput satellite capacity and technology. Combining extremely powerful KA band satellite payloads with advanced ground segment networking software and hardware technology, SkyMuster will deliver ultra fast broadband service to consumers and businesses in uh, and across Australia. Viasat, the company I work for, built 10 massive earth stations and gateway facilities all across the continent. Once Sky Muster goes into operation, the life of Bailey Brooks, that little six-year-old girl we talked about, uh, who emerged as the face of the satellite, her painting uh, was on the fairing of the Ariane 5, all of her friends, uh, their lives will change forever as broadband will be at uh, their fingertips. And uh, that is going to be a life-changing experience uh, for little uh, uh, Bailey uh, Brooks. At 11 minutes and uh, 48 seconds, time now to hear about uh, Sky Muster. SSL a leader in providing highly advanced satellites for high-speed broadband access, built SkyMuster, formerly known as NBNCO 1A for NBN. NBN's goal is to ensure all Australians have access to fast broadband and connect 8 million Australian homes and businesses to the NBN network by 2020. The rollout of the NBN network will enable Australia's greater participation in the digital economy and help bridge the digital divide between young and old, city and country, and between Australia and the rest of the world. SkyMuster is the first of two high-throughput satellites that extend Australia's new broadband network to provide fast broadband access to households and businesses in rural and remote Australia. This satellite service is going to be quite an advanced satellite service because we have state-of-the-art satellites that have been built for it, in addition, we've got uh, 10 ground stations that will be operating with state-of-the-art software and equipment that's the latest in technology to ensure that our user experience is as good as it can possibly be. SkyMuster is one of the biggest, most powerful broadband spacecraft ever made. At launch, it will weigh 6,400 kilograms. It has 101 spot beams and will provide high-speed internet to hundreds of thousands of people. SkyMuster is the 100th 1300 satellite that SSL has delivered, and there are more 1300 satellites on orbit providing service today than any other satellite model. As a robust, flight-proven platform that has continually evolved to incorporate innovation and advanced technologies, the 1300 provides the power and capacity needed for service precisely tailored to Australia's highly geographically varied user distribution. This program's success is a direct result of SSL's excellent relationship with NBN. From the beginning, we've been in complete alignment with NBN's management style and work ethic, which has culminated in this huge accomplishment.
SSL and NBN are both committed to providing solutions that improve people's lives. Our first satellite, SkyMaster, was named as a result of a school children's competition and we had children across Australia send in their original artwork showing how NBN is going to make Australia a better place to live. And our winner, Bailey Brooks, is a six-year-old girl who lives on a remote cattle station uh, in the middle of the country in Northern Territory. She's 400 kilometres from Alice Springs and she attends school via the School of the Air. And this means that her and her other classmates are hundreds of kilometres apart. They attend school via a satellite link um, to their teacher who's back in Alice Springs. They get to see their teacher and maybe one or two other students on the screen at any one time. And the interesting thing is that her mother went to School of the Air when she was a kid and she did that via radio. So there's already been one advancement. When NBN comes along, they'll be able to see each other with a lot of more uh, video content, they'll be able to see a lot more of their classmates uh, at one time. So that will be a great improvement for her. But her, her classmates and herself, with her teacher's help, were able to choose the name of our satellite. And Sky Muster is to help depict the fact that mustering of cattle brings the cattle together. The Sky Muster satellite will help bring Australians together by their high-speed internet services. SSL was selected for this program in part because of its broadband experience, but also because of the high caliber of people. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the people at SSL for all that you've done to get us here today. Thank you. SSL also thanks NBN for the opportunity to work together on this important satellite and Ariana Spas for the successful launch campaign. It takes skill, dedication, and commitment to build a satellite as complex and capable as SkyMuster. Just as the satellite will improve communications in Australia and bring people together, it was NBN, SSL, and Ariana Spas working together as a team that has made Sky Muster a success. As we return to Jupiter, a little over 17 minutes into the mission during the film, Marion 5 was acquired by our tracking station on Ascension Island in the Atlantic. All is going well. Let's hear more about RSAT 2. Con el ARSAT-2, la Argentina pone en órbita su segundo satélite de telecomunicaciones y refuerza su compromiso de ocupar las posiciones orbitales asignadas al país con satélites propios, impulsar el desarrollo de la industria espacial local. Además, asume nuevos desafíos para posicionar al país como proveedor de servicios satelitales en el continente y facilitar la exportación de contenidos audiovisuales producidos en Latinoamérica. El ARSAT-2 se ubicará a los 81 grados de longitud oeste. Tiene tres antenas, una desplegable y otra fija, que transmiten en banda CAU y otra desplegable que emite en banda C. Su área de servicio incluye el continente americano en tres coberturas, sudamericana, norteamericana y hemisférica. Su masa total de lanzamiento es de 3 toneladas. ARSAT es la empresa nacional a cargo de vehiculizar el desarrollo de los satélites geoestacionarios de telecomunicaciones en el país. Realizó la especificación del ARSAT-2 y supervisó todas las etapas de la misión. INVAP es la empresa estatal de alta tecnología de la provincia de Río Negro, encargada del desarrollo del satélite. Los ensayos ambientales que atravesó el ARSAT-2 recrearon las condiciones de lanzamiento y la vida en el espacio. También fueron realizados en Argentina en el Centro de Ensayos de Alta Tecnología, SEATSA, de ARSAT e INVAP. La estación terrena Benavides de ARSAT dirigirá la puesta en órbita del satélite para llevarlo a la órbita geoestacionaria. Con el ARSAT-2 será la segunda vez que un país latinoamericano diseña y desarrolla un satélite de telecomunicaciones, dirige su puesta en órbita y explota el servicio sin intermediarios. Este satélite permite iluminar las tres Américas para brindar servicios de televisión, internet, datos y telefonía sobre IP desde la tundra canadiense hasta la península antártica. La transmisión en banda CAU del ARSAT-2 refuerza la misión territorial y socialmente integradora del primer satélite geoestacionario argentino a nivel nacional. Su banda C agrega dos ventajas en cobertura panamericana. No sufre atenuación por lluvias y es la primera opción para la transmisión satelital de televisión, lo que permitirá favorecer la exportación de contenido 
sonidos audiovisuales. Muy pocos países en el mundo fabrican satélites geoestacionarios. Con el ARSAT 1, Argentina se sumó a este grupo. Con el ARSAT 2, redoblamos la apuesta para llegar otra vez a lo más alto, pero más alto. Soberanía nacional, soberanía satelital. Eso también es dar impulso a un país. Packet Jupiter, and again, all is well. The Ariane 5 is now uh, closing in on uh, the coast of Africa. Amazing to think that in less than 25 minutes, we've gone from here in Carvu uh, all the way over uh, to Africa, crossing uh, the Atlantic Ocean. The upper stage of the Ariane 5, nearing uh, the end of its uh, 16 minutes of work. Again, uh, we're 420 uh, kilometers into the sky. Speed is really increasing now. We're up uh, well over 9 kilometers a second. And that is done by several small rockets on the side of the launcher. The pointing has to be uh, very exact. Needless to say, years of hard work by everyone involved in the SkyMaster program. Coming down to the next few seconds, a set of springs are going to release SkyMaster at precisely the correct moment. And special words again to Bailey Brooks little six-year-old girl, and she's about to see and witness her satellite, the one she named, be uh, separated and go on its way for years of service over the Australian continent and literally change the way Australia lives and does business. There you see the handshakes as uh, the... Separation de Skymaster. There it is, the announcement, and you see it on the screen. Skymaster separating. It's on its way in the dreams of six-year-old Bailey Brooks in Northwest Territory of Australia, taking a huge step toward reality. Congratulations, Bailey. There is a new star in the sky over your home uh, tonight. And uh, while you see smiles, the tradition here at Corvu is to hold the applause till the satellites uh, have both uh, been separated. The Aryan family launchers have now done it 399 times. Number 400 is only a couple of minutes away. Now the next act of the Space Ballet, we need to turn that composite away from the direction we just sent Bailey's satellite in. Then we need to prepare to jettison the silver, the black structure. It's a uh, small fairing. It's the secret sauce of the Ariane 5. It makes possible dual satellite launches. It's protected our Sat 2 on the ground, provide the base upon which we put Sky Muster. We want to be sure we send it away from either of the two satellites. The precision of what you're going to be seeing now simply can't be understated. Imagine what's happening. That composite, and it has the Silda and RSAT-2, they're half a world away over Australia, or over Africa, rather. They're racing along more than nine kilometers a second, nine times the speed of a bullet. And if you've ever seen uh, the movie Gravity, you know bad things happen when even the smallest piece of debris collides with a satellite. That Silda is five meters tall. It weighs over five hundred kilograms and we have to be sure that we jettison it uh, successfully and uh, that will be happening du système de lancement double Ariane. there you go that announcement means that the silda has been separated and jettisoned and our sat 2 is seeing the sun for the first time over or will very shortly over Africa. Uh, yet another act of the space ballet begins. The onboard computers are calculating the exact course change necessary now to drop off our Sat 2. Obviously, we don't want it to collide with either SkyMuster or the Silda. And a whole lot more rocket science and orbital physics coming into play uh, right now. You see the excitement building. And the space ballet continues as we pair, prepare for the separation of our set two. That will happen at about uh, 32 and a half minutes into uh, flight. So our folks at our set have a minute and a half or so uh, to uh, 
to wait for this. You'll recall that, uh, you know, we talked about all of the various data that comes down from the telemetry stations. Well, we use that data that came from the tracking stations uh, at a very special facility because it pours down from the Ariane 5. It arrives at what we call the CVI. It's located inside that Galio tracking station on the mountain just south of me here. And there's a four-person team called the Immediate Visual Control Team. They monitor 150 critical parameters in real time out of more than 1,000 that are coming in. The rest of that data is stored on massive hard drives, and it will be analyzed over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, that allows the engineers to determine exactly how every system uh, performed. We're back at uh, Jupiter now, and the orbital ballet continues. Uh, the upper stage and our set two being configured for the right uh, position. And again, uh, we're less than 30 seconds away from this place exploding with excitement over the placement of the 400th satellite to be separated from an Ariane launcher. Début de la mise en spin. And they're spinning up the satellite, getting ready. Should happen about 28 seconds after. Separation Arsat 2. There it is. There's the announcement that uh, the separation has occurred. Aryan Space has delivered again. Number 400. Look at the celebration. Even the flags breaking out. Uh, here at Jupiter, we'll let you enjoy it for a moment. And uh, again, talk about uh, some great uh, joy. Yeah, I've heard it described as having a baby because some of these people have worked for literally years on these projects. And one can only imagine the uh, thrill of what has culminated in, what, less than 40 minutes from the launch till now. Be watching as continued handshakes and cheers take place. By the way, don't leave us. Uh, there's going to be uh, some great replays. <laughs> it's really getting... Uh, Exciting down here as people cheer and wave that uh, Argentine flag. And then we're going to have uh, some key speeches uh, given uh, this evening. A lot of work uh, went into this. And we're going to be seeing some replays coming up in a moment. And here you go. Let's take a look again. The mighty Arian 5 delivers 399 and 400. As the NBN staff with some thumbs up. Replay again. You could watch this all night long. I've seen it many times here at Carveru. And the heavyweight champion of the launch industry has delivered again tonight. Incredible. First time I was here was in 2007. And I've enjoyed every single time. <laughs> more flags breaking out. More photos. I heard it was going to be quite a party. And it looks like it is.
More cheering. Hello. Another replay that you see. Ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, Minister De Vido, dear Excellency Jean-Michel Casa, French Ambassador in Argentina, dear customers, distinguished guests, Ariane Space is delighted to announce that SkyMaster and ARSAT2 were separated as planned on their targeted standard geostationary transfer orbits. Tonight, Ariane Space is happy to celebrate Ariane 5's 68th success in a row with two regional operators coming from two great nations of the Southern Hemisphere, Australia and Argentina, with whom we have established strong partnership. I must say that tonight we had a duty not only for two customers, and it's always important to deliver for your customers, but really for two nations, and we delivered. In upper position, SkyMaster is the first satellite of NBN. This satellite, together with the second one, aims at reducing the digital divide on the Australian continent and on several islands of the Pacific Ocean by providing remote and rural areas with access to high-speed internet. Let me thus take this opportunity to deeply thank Mr. Sigmund Zwitkowski, NBN's chairman, for entrusting Ariane Space with the launch of his two satellites. We know how critical these satellites are for the NBN project, and therefore we are very grateful for being recognized as the reference launch solution in your development plan. We will be on track to deliver into orbit your second satellite next year. Let me also congratulate SSL and its president, John Selly, with us tonight here in Jupiter. SkyMaster is indeed the 50-second geostationary spacecraft built upon an SSL bus to be launched by Ariane Space, the fourth in uh, 2050. We have 13 more SSL satellites to be orbited by our launch vehicle family. Our long-standing cooperation is to continue. In lower position, ARSAT-2 is the second satellite launched by Ariane Space for ARSAT, following ARSAT-1 launch in October 2040. ARSAT-2 will enable ARSAT to increase its capacity to deliver various telecommunication services above the Americas, including direct-to-home television and data transmission. I just want to express my gratitude to ARSAT's chairman and CEO, Matthias Bianchi, for entrusting Ariane Space with the launch of these two satellites, but also for being so faithful to Ariane Space. Indeed, and you made that before the launch, I must say that I am a little bit superstitious. So, but you chose to sign before the launch. And uh, we signed uh, earlier today, uh, this afternoon, a service agreement for ARSAT-3 to be flown in 2019, which includes two more options to continue our cooperation until 2023. So we will have the opportunity to, to see each other here and in Buenos Aires, at least. So, muchísimas gracias por su confianza. Our partnership has only been possible thanks to the support of the Argentinian government, who once decided to kick off a very ambitious national program to develop Argentina capabilities in the field of satellite telecommunication. Let me associate to these thanks Mr. Julio De Vido, Minister of Planning and Public Investment, with us tonight. Dear Minister, it is a great honor to welcome you one more time in CSG here in French Guiana, especially in a day which saw France and Argentina getting even closer to each other through the signature of a space cooperation agreement. It was done also 
that, uh, earlier this afternoon. I want also to thank Jean-Michel Casa, our French ambassador in Argentina, for his continuous and uh, efficient involvement in our partnership with Argentina and in this agreement. This agreement would not have been possible without the effort of both Minister Davido and Ambassador Casa. Last but not least, congratulations to INVAP, Arsatu Manufacturers, and its chairman, Horacio Augusto Osuna, for delivering its second geostationary spacecraft in less than one year. Tonight, Ariane Space has completed 75% of our 2015 roadmap, with nine launches in nine months. We are fully in line with our Buzzy Manifest targeting up to 12 launches this year, contemplating for three more in the last quarter, one with every vehicle of our family. Launch after launch, success after success, Ariane Space demonstrates its capability to increase its launch rates while remaining the most reliable space transportation solution for all customers, whether commercial or institutional, whether GTO or non-GTO. I wish to congratulate congratulate all our partners for this success story. ESA, prime contractor of the Ariane program. Industry, led by, led by Airbus Safran launchers to deliver to us this outstanding launcher. I want to have here a special word for ASL because today they made a coup double. Something happened uh, uh, with uh, deterrence uh, this morning and it was also a success. I want to thank CNES, CSG, and our Grand Industrialists for their continuous support, and for sure, all Ariane Space team for their 100% commitment towards our customers. I want to thank our uh, sales team, uh, Florent Dei, Tony Thomas, uh, and all the teams who made this uh, uh, success tonight possible and this uh, long-term partnership with our customers. All together, you have made the difference tonight. All together, you deserve a triple A as for Australia, Argentina, and Iron Space. So I now leave the floor to our dear customers and partners. Thank you very much and enjoy this evening. And again, that was Stefan Israel making his comments and uh, it has been an incredible night here. Another Arian 5 mission has uh, come to an end. This one, the 68th success in a row. And there is the replay again. It's been my honor to serve as your host again this evening. First time I came to Koru was in 2007. And I look forward to many opportunities to share the excitement of a launch from French Guiana with you in the future again. Uh, we say congratulations to everybody involved in BA-226, especially uh, the folks from SkyMuster and RSAT-2. And Bailey, you've got your bird in the sky and enjoy it tonight. For the world's number one satellite launch provider, Ariane Space, I'm Harry Thibodeau, and I bid you good night from Corvu, French Guiana. <laughs>